Okay, good uh, good day everyone. For today's video, ang ating topic is uh, thermodynamics. Okay, so let's proceed sa ating PowerPoint presentation. So, okay, uh, before we proceed sa ating topic na thermodynamics, let's talk about uh, temperature muna. So, i-introduce ko muna sa inyo ang ating uh, kung ano ang temperature. So, next slide. So, introduction ng ating topic. So, in our study, we carefully define such concept as mass, force, and kinetic energy to facilitate our quantitative approaches or approach. Likewise, a uh, quantitative uh, description of a thermal phenomena requires careful, careful definitions of such important terms such as temperature, heat, and internal energy. So in this chapter or, uh, or in our discussion, uh, begins with a discussion of temperature and with a description of one of the laws of thermo thermodynamics, the so-called zero law. Next, we consider why an important factor when we are dealing, dealing with thermal, thermal phenomena is the particular substance we are investigating. For example, uh, gas expand, uh, gases expand appreciably when heated, whereas liquid and solids expand only slightly. So here we will define kung ano ang temperature. So we often associate the concept of temperature with how hot or cold an object feels when we touch it. Thus, our senses provides us uh, with a qualitative indication of temperature. However, our senses are un unreliable and often mislead us. For example, nito, if we remove a metal ice tray and a card box, a cardboard box of a frozen vegetable from the freezer, yung ating ice tray feels colder than doon sa ating cardboard, cardboard box. Even though both of them are at the same temperature. O baga nasa, nasa freezer lang man din sila, pero mas, mas malamig hawakan yung ating uh, metal, metal tray yung ice tray, kaysa dun sa cardboard box. So, these two objects feels different or feel different because metal transfers energy by heat at, the, at a higher rate than, you, than doon sa ating cardboard. What we need is a reliable and, uh, and reproducible method for measuring a relative hotness or coldness of objects rather than the rate of energy transfer. Scientists have developed a variety of thermometers to make, uh, for making such quantitative measurements. To understand the concept of temperature, it is uh, useful to define two often used phrases, yung ating thermal contact and thermal equilibrium. Equilibrium. So here, to grasp the meaning ng ating thermal contact, imagine that two objects are placed in an insulated container such that they interact with each other but not with the environment. So if the objects are at different temperatures, energy is exchanged between them. Okay? hanggang sa makaabot sila ng thermal equilibrium. So even if they are initially not in, uh, not in physical contact with each other, uh, even if they are not, uh, uh, even if initially they are not in physical contact with each other. 
Next, yung ating thermal equilibrium. So it is a, it is a situation in which uh, two objects would not exchange energy by heat or electromagnetic radiation if they were, if they were placed in a thermal contact. We can think of temperature as a property that determines whether an object is in thermal equilibrium with other objects. Two objects in thermal equilibrium with each other are at the same temperature. So ito yung keynote para sa uh, definition ng ating thermal equilibrium. So two objects will, will come or maging, uh, will approach to the state na yung kanilang uh, both uh, temperature will come uh, the same. So uh, thermo thermometers are devices that are, that are used to measure the temperature of a system. All thermometers are based on the principle that some physical property of a system changes as the system's uh, temperature changes. So we will discuss here yung ating uh, a zero law of thermodynamics. So let us consider itong sa ating figure. So object A and object B. So ito yung ating object A. Object A and then object B. So magka magkaiba sila na uh, object. So, which are not in thermal contact. So, hindi pa sila nagka, nagkadikit kumbaga or nagtouch each other. And the third object, eh, which is our thermometer. So, with here, uh, kumbaga, in this state, sa letter C, uh, we will take their temperature. So, we wish to determine whether yung ating object A and B are in thermal equilibrium with each other. So yung thermometer natin sa object C is first placed in thermal contact to ang sa ating uh, uh, object A until thermal equilibrium is reached. Um, uh, dito sa ating figure, 19.1A. Uh, uh, From that moment on, the thermometer's reading uh, remains constant. So ito yung ating reading, di ba? And we record this reading. Then yung thermometer is then removed from the object A and placed in thermal contact with object B as shown sa ating figure, letter B. The reading is, the, is again recorded after thermal equilibrium is reached. So the same na yung kanilang thermo, uh, thermometer uh, temperature which is uh, dito sa ating reading 225. If two, if the two readings are the same, then yung object A natin and object B are in thermal equilibrium. So same na yung temperature nila with each other. And if they are placed in contact with each other, sa ating le uh, letter C, there is no exchange of energy between them dahil same lang din naman yung kanilang temperature. So we can summarize this result as the statement known as the zero law of thermodynamics or the law of equilibrium of temperature. So next. Next, i-discuss natin yung ating thermal expansion. Okay, ating thermal expansion of, expansion of solids and liquids. So our discussion of the liquid thermometer makes us uh, makes use of one of the best known changes in substance. It is a temper uh, it as its temperature increases. No, as its temperature increases, yung kanyang volume also increase uh, will increase. So this phenomenon is also known as thermal expansion and has an important role in numerous 
engineering applications. For example, the thermal expansion of joints, such as uh, those in, at, in our figure 19.17. Uh, so, uh, in our figure, must be included in buildings, uh, concrete highways, railroads, um, brick walls, and bridge, bridges to compensate for the uh, dimensional changes that occur as the temperature changes. Thermal expansion is a consequence of the change in the average separation between the atoms in an object. If thermal expansion is sufficiently small relative to its object's initial dimension, then you change in any dimension is to a good approximation proportional to the first power of the temperature change. So dito sa ating figure, sa ating uh, figure A, yung ating thermal expansion joints are used to separate section of roadways on bridges. So without these joints, the surface would buckle, buckle due to thermal expansion on a very hot days or crack due to contraction on very cold days. So letter B naman natin. The, uh, the long vertical joint, itong ating vertical joint. Ito. Uh, is filled with soft material that allows the wall to expand in and, in and contract as the temperature of the bricks changes. So kung wala kasi tayo ditong uh, in layman's term lang, kung wala tayong uh, space para sa ating expansion, if dikit lang talaga yan siya, so once na mag-init yung ating uh, environment, yung ating object or yung ating material, malalaki kasi yan siya. So kung wala tayong ibibigay na uh, space for expansion, magka-crack yung ating uh, material. Uh, and then same lang din ang concept dito sa ating mga bricks. Kaya yung ating mga bricks, meron tayong mga spaces na uh, gina-allow to allow expansion. So next, yung ating uh, thermal expansion formula. Suppose that an object has an initial length Li along some, along some direction at, at some temperature and that the length increases by the amount of L for a change in temperature T. Because it is convenient to consider the fractional change in length per degree of temperature change. We define the average uh, the coefficient of linear expansion as in this formula. So yung ating uh, linear expansion is delta L. So ang formula natin is yung ating alpha times sa ating initial uh, initial length times a change in temperature. Okay. Next, yung ating ideal gas law. So in this uh, in this expression uh, known as the ideal gas law, yung ating R is constant. And yung ating N is the number of moles of gas in, in the sample. So experiment on numerous gases show that as the pressure approaches zero, yung quantity natin sa PV over NT, okay, NT, approaches the same value ng R for all gases. So, delete na natin. Madumi siya. Okay. For this reason, yung ating R or uh, is called the universal gas. 
So again, ang regular gas is one for which yung ating PV over NV is constant. So pressure times velocity all over the number of moles times yung ating temperature. An ideal gas is described by the equation of the state yung ating PV equals to N equals to RT. Uh, equals to N RT. So, n natin kasi is the mole of the gas. V is the volume. R is the universal gas. Uh, ito, uh, may other uh, unit pa ito siya. So, kumbaga ito, convert na into other unit. And then, yung T natin is absolute temperature, which is at sa Kelvin ang unit. A real gas behaves absolutely uh, as an ideal gas if it if it has a low density. So let's proceed sa ating uh, transfer of heat na discussion. So introduction. Heat is a form of energy which is responsible for the hot condition or the cold condition of a body. Since it is a form of energy, the quantity of heat is measured in joule, okay? With the symbol na uh, capital letter J. We can realize the hotness or coldness of a body by our sense of touch. So, qualitative uh, approach ito. But there should be a method to determine the degree of hotness or coldness, yung ating quantitative. Temperature is a measure of a relative degree of hotness or coldness of the body. For quantitative measurement of temperature, some standard temperature are required, which can be easily reproduced in a, any laboratory. So generally, we take the melting point of a ice as lower fixed point and the boiling point of water as a steam point. So yung ating melting point or ice point, yung ating degree is equal to degree Celsius. Yung kind of temperature tayo, ito yung ating ice state. And then yung wala ay yung degree Celsius natin is yung ating steam state. So be sure to, uh, to be familiar with this uh, value ng ating Celsius with different states. Okay. So to measure the temperature, different scales are in use. So meron tayong centigrade. So in this scale, the temperature is measured in degree Celsius with symbol na degree Celsius. In this uh, degree Celsius, degree and capital letter C. So, in this scale, uh, the lower fixed point is taken as a zero degree Celsius for ice point. Okay, ice point. And the upper fixed uh, point is taken as 100 degree Celsius for steam point. So, we have here yung ating formula to uh, interchange. Kumbaga, kung convert natin yung ating Celsius into temperature. Or we have the value ng temperature and convert it to uh, Celsius. Next is in Fahrenheit scale. In this scale, the temperature is measured in degree Fahrenheit with the symbol of degree and capital letter F. Here, the lower fixed point or yung ating ice point is taken as 32 degree Fahrenheit. And the upper fixed uh, point or yung ating steam point is taken as 212 degree Fahrenheit. So we have here yung kanyang a formula. If okay, okay, formula. Next is yung ating absolute scale or Kelvin scale. Okay. In this scale, the temperature is measured in by the unit Kelvin with the symbol na big letter K, 
Usually, the temperature are measured in centigrade, uh, centigrade scale in laboratories. And then to convert the temperature from centigrade to Kelvin, we just have to add 273 na value. Because zero Kelvin correspond, correspond to negative 273 degree Celsius. So example, yung ating room temperature is 32 degree Celsius. So I convert natin siya into Kelvin. We, we will just ha have to add 273. So with the uh, value na 32 degree Celsius, conversion niya into Kelvin is 305 Kelvin. So next is, uh, let's talk na regarding sa ating thermodynamics. So what is thermodynamics and heat? Thermodynamics can be defined as the study of energy. And energy transformation as its relation to mass. Heat is defined as a transfer of energy across the boundary of a system due to the temperature difference between the system and its surrounding. Okay. And then yung ating internal energy is all the energy of a system that is associated with its microscopic, microscopic um, components such as atom and molecules when viewed from a reference frame at rest with respect to, its, uh, to the center of mass of the system. So yung ating internal energy is the, this is the combination or ad summation of potential energy and kinetic energy. Next, yung ating heat. Yung heat natin meron siyang dalawang unit. So we can, uh, here we have the calorie, which is defined as the amount of energy transfer necessary to rise the temperature of one gram of water from 14 degrees Celsius to uh, 15, 14.5 degrees Celsius to 15.5 degrees Celsius. Next is yung ating BTU, which is British Thermal Unit, which is defined as the amount of energy transfer required to rise or to raise the temperature from one pound of water. So example, degree pound, a degree pound, the, uh, 63 degree Fahrenheit to 64 degree Fahrenheit. Next, yung ating latent heat. So latent heat or yung ating fusion which is represented as uh, L sub F, is the term used when the phase change its uh, form from solid to liquid. To fuse, the, uh, to fuse means to combine by melting. Latent heat of uh, vaporization is represented as L sub V, is the term used when the phase changes uh, from liquid to gas. So you're adding liquid vaporize. So we have here you're adding um, table with the latent heats of fusion, uh, value ng latent heats of fusion and vaporization. So kung masali mo ito sa ating exam, itong table na to is, uh, will be given. So before we okay, before we proceed to other discussion, let's solve this problem first. Okay, so okay, so we have the problem here. Uh, zero point zero five kilogram ingot of metal. Ito is current currency. Ito siya sa um. Ancient, ano ba yun? 
Chinese, a chai. Wait lang, tama ba? Repeat tayo ha. A 0 0.5, 0 0.05 kilogram of ingot of metal, ito isang currency, Chinese currency, is heated to a 200 degree Celsius. And when dropped into a beaker containing 0 0.0, uh, 0 0.4 kilogram of water initially at uh, 20 degrees Celsius, if the, if the final equilibrium temperature of, of the mixed system is 22.4 degrees Celsius, find the specific heat of the metal. So we have the solution na M, M, na MW, which is the mass of water. TW is yung specific uh, heat of water. Yung ating uh, final equilibrium temperature. So final temperature natin minus yung initial temperature of water. That equals to the mass ng ating material. Yung mass na ingot metal. And then yung kanyang uh, specific heat, uh, yung mass na ating ingot metal, specific heat, and then tayo sa kanyang final equilibrium temperature, and then yung initial temperature. So yung mass uh, ng ating uh, water is, so ano bang mass ng ating water? Uh, ito. So, 0 0.4 kilogram of water. So, yan ang ating mass of water. Next is, ano ang ating specific heat of water? So, balik tayo sa table ng ating specific heat. So, here, uh, yung ating table, or, oh yes, table ng ating specific heat, so water. So, ito yung ating value. Okay? So, ito yung ating consider na unit. So, 4,186 4, ang ating value for the a specific heat of water. Next, anong value, next, anong value ng ating uh, final equilibrium temperature? It is 22. 0.4 degrees Celsius. Then, yung mass ng ating uh, ing ingot metal, which is 0 0.05 kilogram. And then, ito ang ating unknown variable. Yung ating uh, uh, specific uh, heat ng ating metal. And then, yung, uh, yung ating final equilibrium temperature, which is again, 22.4 degrees Celsius. And then yung ating in initial temperature ng ating metal, which is 20 at uh, 20, 200 degrees Celsius. So let's put those values sa ating equation. So we have this equation. So na input na natin lahat. So since isa lang yung ating unknown variable, we can put this or input this at the calculator. Shift so we have the value of the C sub X or adding specific heat of metal na 452.54 joule uh, per kilogram degree Celsius. So yan yung answer ng ating problem. Okay, next. Next is yung ating discussion regarding sa ating heat transfer. So there are three methods of transfer of heat from one place to another. They are conduction, convection, and radiation. So in conduction takes place uh, takes place both in solid and fluid. Convection naman cannot occur in solids. Okay? So itong kanilang mga 
pinaka uh, uh, difference. Radiation naman does not require any presence of a, any any medium. So let's discuss yung mga methods again. Conduction. So in conduction, the molecules of the body are responsible for the heat transfer. So yung molecules of the body or ng ating object. Here, there is no actual movement of molecules from one place to another place. When a rod is heated at one end, the molecules at the hot end vibrates to the other side or, or to their uh, mean position and transfer the heat energy to the neighboring molecules and thus the heat energy reaches the other end of the rod hanggang sa yung buong object is uh, mag uh, reach sa uh, thermal equilibrium so, kumbaga mainit na yung buong buong rod next uh, conduction is the process by which the heat is transmitted from one point to another without the actual movement of the particles from their equilibrium position. Thus, conduction takes place in solid, liquid, and, and gaseous states. Next, yung ating coefficient of thermal conductivity. So let us consider a metallic rod of a cross-sectional area A. Okay? Uh, let, uh, let the two ends be separated at distance D. Maintain the temperature uh, Q sub 1, Q sub 1, uh, delta 1, and delta 2. Let delta 1 be greater than delta 2. The heat flows from the end of the higher temperature to the end of the lower temperature. So kung dito sa ating delta 1, uh, dito yung ating heat source. So from there, magta-transfer or mag-move yung ating temperature towards uh, sa ating delta 2. So when, this, uh, when the uh, steady state is rich, the quantity of heat or yung ating Q is uh, conducted is directly proportional to the area of cross-sectional a, a. And it will be directly proportional to the difference in temperature between the ends of delta 1 and delta 2. It will also be directly proportional to the time for which the heat is conducted. Okay. And inversely proportional to the distance between the two ends. So here is our uh, formula para sa ating thermal conductivity. So hence, yung ating heat, heat Q, delta A times uh, or Q equals to the uh, coefficient of thermal conductivity in atom times area times temperature sub 1 minus temperature sub 2 times time over the distance. So be familiar with this formula for adding thermal conductivity. So meron tayo dito uh, table of our thermal conductors. We have the substance na silver, copper, aluminum, steel, lead, and concrete. So we have a good and poor thermal conductors here. Again, may sub, sub, a substance naman tayo na water, uh, brick, rubber, wood, glass, and ebonite. This, uh, itong ating table, is from good conductor, which is yung ating silver ang naka, nasa ating top list. 
to the poor thermal conductors. So this ebonite na substance ng ating uh, nasa bottom ng ating table which will be our poor thermal conductor. So yung ating thermal conductors, we required both good and poor thermal conductors according to the need of our uh, material or yung ating, sa ating project. So materials having higher values of coefficient of uh, thermal conductivity are termed as good thermal conductors. And the materials having lower values ng ating uh, coefficient of thermal conductivity, they are called as poor thermal conductors or ating insulators. So the presence of free electrons in metals help uh, the easy transfer of heat from one part of the metal to the other part. So all metals, metals are good thermal conductors of heat. Some important materials and their values of coefficient of thermal conductivity are listed above, yung kanina nga. So both these uh, conductors, yung good and poor conductors, are used in our construction. Okay? So itong poor thermal conductors uh, as or yung ating insulators, uh, ginagamit ito pag once yung ating, uh, alibawa yung ating roofing, masyadong mainit, di ba yan? So uh, gina, para maka, ano ba to? Yung ating kumbaga bahay, hindi masyadong mainit. So maglalagay tayo ng uh, insulator between dun sa ating ceiling and doon sa ating roof. So yun nga yung uses ng ating thermal conductors. Number one, handles made of wood or ebonite are provided for cookers or dun sa ating mga hot water vessels. Number two, hot water bottles are made of rub a rubber uh, and are able to keep hot water at high temperature for a considerable period of time. Number three, a use of double windows with a thin layer of air enclosed in between them keep the room warm in cold countries. Number four, yung wool, pork, and ebonite are used for the purpose of heat insulate, insulation sa ating refrigeration. Number five, woolen, uh, woolen clothes are used in winter to keep the body warm. Six, sawdust and jute sheets are used to cover ice to prevent it from melting. Uh, vessels made of copper or aluminum and etc. are used for cooking purposes as they easily conduct heat. And the last yung copper natin is used in boilers and radiators because of its good conductivity. So balik tayo dun sa methods of heat transfer natin. So next is yung ating convection. In the, in the case of heat transfer by convection, there is actual movement or motion of molecules of fluid dun sa ating liquid or gas. The portion of the fluid that get warm up by contact with the heat source, it will expand and so move up through the body of the fluid due to the decrease in density. There is an inflow of cooler molecules to take place of heated mass of the fluid which has moved up. This circulatory motion of fluid a fluid mass by which of heat is transferred from place to place is called convection. Convection is a process in which the heat is transmitted from one place to other by the actual movement of the heat particles. Convection takes place only sa gas and liquid states. It cannot take place in solid uh, a solid state. So here we have the application ng ating uh, convection heat 
transfer. Number one, the wind flow uh, is due to convection currents in the atmosphere. During daytime, parts of the earth get heated by the sun. And as the air expands, it rises up and it, and it takes place. Uh, its place is taken by the flow of air from cooler or colder areas. Number two, the land breeze and sea breeze are due to convection in the atmosphere. During daytime, yung land mass is heated to a higher level, level than the sea. So the warm air over the land arises, giving place to the cool air from the, from the ocean. This gives the sea breeze. And during the nighttime, the land mass cools quickly than the water in the sea. So the cool air flows from land towards the sea and gives the uh, land breeze. Next is yung ating uh, radiation heat transfer. For heat transfer by radiation, no medium is required. The heat from the sun is received by the earth only by radiation. Both heat and light travels uh, through space with the same velocity and they are similar in nature. Both are generated and transmitted in the same way. Uh, they are transverse waves and electromagnetic in character, but they differ uh, in wavelength and frequency. The thermal radiations are detected in the radiation uh, in the radiation is the process by which yung heat is transfer transmitted from one place to another without the aid of any interfering material such as medium. So it will give uh, rise to at an infrared regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. So here, properties of thermal radiation. The, nat the nature of thermal radiation is similar to, the, uh, to that of light. Following are, the, are some of the properties of thermal radiation. So we have seven properties. So first, thermal radiation travels with velocity of light, which is three times uh, 10 to the power of eight ito. 10 to the power of eight uh, meter per second. Okay, thermal radiation obeys the same laws of reflection, refraction, and etc. as light. Thermal radiation travels through vacuum. It obeys the it obeys the law of inverse square as of the light. It travels in straight lines. When thermal radiation falls on any body. Which can be absorbed, which can absorb, ab absorb it, then converted into ordinary heat, which which gives rise to its temperature. It is absorbed by dark uh, surfaces and reflected by light, a uh, smooth surface. Next, the applications of radiation. So first. White colored dresses are used in hot countries to keep the inside cool. Okay, this is well known. White color dresses. In some countries, shiny aluminum sheets are used to cover the roof of the houses to reflect back the, the, the radiant heat and to keep uh, the inside of the house cool. Cooking vessels is painted black at the bottom for greater absorption no heat, but polished at the top to minimize radiation losses. And in cold countries, hot air or water runs through pipes along the walls inside the building and the, red, and the radiant heat energy keeps the occupant, occupants warm by central heating. Okay, so 
Next is pag-usapan natin yung laws of thermodynamics. So we have four laws, yung ating zero law. We discussed it a while ago, yung ating thermal contact and thermal equilibrium. Next is yung ating first law of thermodynamics. Nandito yung ating law of conservation of energy. Second law is yung ating entropy as physical property. And then third law is ang ating heat theorem. So again, yung ating zero law of thermodynamics, as we discussed a, a while ago. So if object A and B are separate in thermal equilibrium with the third object B, then A and B are in thermal equilibrium with each other when yung kanilang temperature is the same. So thermal contact, if energy can be exchanged between them, by this process is due to a uh, temperature difference. So itong thermal contact na ito, if ever yung ating uh, object A is uh, mas mainit sa ating object B, so meron tayong heat transfer from object A to object B. So hanggang sa hindi pa mag, uh, mag-reach to the same temperature yung object, so, yung thermal contact is still ongoing. Then, after maging uh, mag-reach sa same temperature yung ating object, then yung ating, it will give rise to thermal equilibrium. So, thermal equilibrium is a, is a situation in which two objects would not exchange energy by heat or electromagnetic radiation. Kasi yung kanilang uh, temperature is already the same if they were placed in thermal contact. So next is the first law, which is conservation of energy principle. So during an interaction, energy can change from one form to another, but the total amount of energy remains, remains constant. So there are two ways in which the energy can be transferred uh, between a system and its surrounding. So we have the uh, from chemical energy to kinetic energy. So in this figure, uh, kumbaga ito ating figure, we have this um, kumbaga from sugar to uh, the energy ng ating mga kids. So sabi nga nila, once na maka-intake yung mga bata, uh, mga toddler ng sugar, mag, mas magiging uh, energe ener energetic sila, mas magiging makulit. So we have that energy transformation. And then next is yung ating light energy. So with the energy from the sun, we it will give rise to photosynthesis. So it will give uh, kumbaga yung food ng ating sorry food ng ating uh, plants para lumaki pa sila lalo so, work is done on the system which requires that there be a macroscopic displacement uh, of of the point of the application of a force heat uh, which occur on a molecular level, whenever a temperature difference exists across the boundary of the system. So equation na ating first law is the um, is yung delta E. Yung delta E is yung change in internal energy. Is equals to yung ating Q is heat plus yung ating W which is work. So heat is absorbed, positive yung ating Q. And when the heat is released, yung ating value sa ating Q is negative. So the work done by the system, positive. The work done on the system, the value ng, uh, value ng ating work is negative. So again, yung ating equation for this, uh, the uh, 
if the energy is added by the heat to the system kept at constant volume, then all the transferred energy remains in the system as an increase in its internal energy. So yung ating work is zero, so constant ang volume natin. So if this happen, yung ating uh, change in internal energy is will be proportional or equal dun sa ating heat, which is under the iso volume, volumetric process. Number two, a process that occurs at constant temperature is called a, an isothermal process or yung ating temperature is constant. So yung ating internal energy or yung change sa internal energy is equals to zero. And yung ating heat is equals to a negative uh, value of work. So this gives rise to our isothermal process. Next is yung ating isothermal expansion of gas. A process that occurs at constant temperature, this, uh, uh, this is called an isothermal process, where yung ating N is number of moles. Yung ating R is the gas constant. Natapik na natin ito a while ago, pero i-recap lang natin. Yung T is the absolute temp temperature, uh, which is in Kelvin. Yung VI natin, initial volume, VF, final volume. So, again, nakitindot ko agad. So, yung ating work in terms of isothermal process formula is ito. So, paki a take note ito for our uh, prob uh, problem solving mm, uh, for the following slides. Okay, so problem number uh, one or problem number two na ito, hindi ko na edit. So uh, 1.0 mo mole sample of an ideal gas is kept at 0, 0.0 during an expansion of 3.0 liter to 10.0 liter. Okay, nagkamali ako na input, sandali lang. Ayusin natin. Okay, again, uh, 1.0 mole, a sample of an ideal gas is kept at a zero degree Celsius during an expansion, uh, expansion from 3.0 liters to 10.0 liters. So, yung ating uh, work ang ating hinahanap dito. So, yung ating uh, previous problem, uh, formula yung ating gagamitin. Okay. So, how much work is done on the gas during the expansion? So, yun nga, yung ating formula is equals to N, which is yung ating a number of mole. R, yung ating gas constant. T, yung ating temperature. Uh, LN times VI over VF, or yung vo initial volume over the final volume. So, it will, uh, ating equation, yung ating N, number of mole, is uh, 1.0. Yung ating gas constant, again, uh, nakamolman, nakamolman, so 8.31 yung ating value. So, joule per mole, mo, per mole Kelvin. And then, yung ating temperature, since zero yung ating Celsius, Uh, 273 Kelvin na yung kanyang conversion. And then LN, LN of yung ating initial volume, 3 over final volume na 10. So, if input sa calculator, itong LN na to, nasa calculator yan ha? So, paki, uh, paki review lang ng calculator nyo para mahanap nyo yung LN. 
So, input nyo sa calculator ninyo lahat ng data na ito. Ang ating work value is negative 2,731.37 Joule. So, once na nakamole yung ating unit, yung unit natin para sa ating work will be in terms of Joule. So, if we need to know the amount of heat, the uh, change in internal uh, heat is equals to heat plus work. So, yung ating change sa ating internal heat is zero. Thus, yung ating Q will be the positive value ng ating work. So, 2,731.37 Joule. That is the amount of heat for this uh, problem. So, letter B, how much energy transferred by heat occurs when the surrounding in, the, in this process, with the surroundings in this process? So, if we need to know the amount of heat, uh, yung ating equation is, or yung ating formula is the change of internal heat is equals to heat plus tong ating work. So again, na tackle na ito. So ang ating heat uh, value is uh, 2,731.37 joules. Letter C, if the gas is returned to the original volume by means of an I isobaric process, how much work is done on the gas? So solution, meron tayong initial uh, initial volume na 10 liters. Final volume. So i-return man natin, no? I-bali, i-bali natin ba? So ito na yung ating initial, ito na yung ating final. So ang final volume natin, 3 liters. So we have a work formula na equals to negative P um, times final volume minus initial volume. So yung P natin, yan siya yung pressure, di ba? So balikan nyo lang yung formula. So i, ano nyo lang, equate nyo lang na uh, yung ating P. Anong value nating P? Okay? So yung value ng ating P is N, R, initial temperature over the initial volume. So with that, meron na tayong mga values dito sa ating uh, problem. So, input ninyo yung mga data. We will have 1.0 times 8.31 times 273 over 10 times uh, 10 to the power of negative 3. I meters man at, I cubic meter man natin siya. So, I divide nyo to sa 1,000. So, I convert yung liters to uh, cubic meters. So, i-divide siya ng 1,000. Kaya naging ganito yung ating value. 10 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So, yun nga. Times dun sa ating uh, final volume minus initial volume. So, 3 times 10 to the power of negative 3 minus 10 times 10 to the power of negative 3. So, paki-input sa calculator, we have our work value na 1,588.04 Joule. Okay. So, dito na muna magtatapos yung ating uh, discussion. So, next problem, let's discuss that sa uh, next meeting or next video presentation. So, thank you students. Hope you uh, learn. And then, uh, see you next video.